Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video, we will try to assess your Python skills. So, are you an intermediate? Well, let's try to find out by answering those upcoming questions. These questions are subjective. This is my point of view. So you might think they are too easy, or even they are too hard. So please drop me a comment, what do you think? I'm really looking forward to it. As a recommendation, I would suggest you to use only pen and paper. Why? Because using Python supports a trial and error approach. So you could just type in stuff until it works, which is actually pretty relatable to programming, but we don't want to do it right now. We want to have a realistic view of our Python skills. I will go through these questions without any comments from me, but afterwards I will go through all these questions with you together solving them. So if you want to solve them on your own, pause the video once you see the question. Let's get started. Now, let us go through these questions together. Question number one is related to typecasting in Python, especially typecasting a float into an integer. So what's happening here? Well, we have a float value here and we typecast into an integer. Well, we are just getting the five. So let's execute that and print out the x. So what is happening? The decimal is being cut off and not rounded. Really important. Question number two, how large is x? Well, let's execute that. We have defined x as 3 and we are assigning 1 to x in the function here. But how large is x now? Well, x is still 3. Why? Because we have defined x on the global area here and we have defined x on the local area here. So remember, flow of execution in Python. Question number 3. Write a recursive function. So I've covered this many times. I'm just typing it down here now. So let's define this function factorial of a given n and then if n equals to 0 we're returning 1 and else we're returning the factorial of n minus 1 times n. Let's execute that and test that. Factorial of 5 should be 120. Works perfectly. So factorial of 0 is 1. So that's it. Question number four. Merge two lists below into a dictionary. So we have those given lists here. So we are defining a dictionary name and we have to call the dictionary function, then the zip function, and then we are providing names and grades as arguments. And afterwards, we are printing out this dictionary. And here we are we have this dictionary here. Question number five. Write a for loop starting at four, printing out every third number, skipping multiple of three, ending at 16. So let's incorporate that. For i in range, starting at four, ending at 16. Remember, the ending value is always excluded, so we have to add a one up to the ending value to include this one here. Then we should only print out every third number, so we need a step of three in this uh, loop. And now we have to skip every multiple of 3. And I'm incorporating this via the modulo operator. So if I modulo operator 3 and then is not 0, so I'm 
only including items which uh, which are not a multiple of three. So I'm excuse me, I'm printing out the i here. So and now we're getting those numbers which we actually were asked for. Question number three. Write a while loop which is repetitively asking for an input to add this input to a list. The loop should end when the list exceeds two items. Final list should be printed. Okay, let's define a list first. So an empty list is defined here. And now let's define the while loop while and then we are saying list exceeds two items. So we are taking the length of the list and say if this is smaller than two then give me an item which I'm defining as an input function of which item you want to add. And afterwards I'm just appending, so I'm taking this list here and I'm appending with the append function this item. Okay. Afterwards I'm printing out this list. So let's check that and provide some items, snacks and beverages and afterwards I'm getting the list. Done. Question number seven. Write a function to multiply a given value x by two. Afterwards you find a second function which takes the output of the first function multiplying it by two again. Example x equals five. First function must return ten. Second must return twenty. So let's define the first function first. So define first function with a given x and then just take x times two. Right? So let's execute that and actually uh, provide the 5 and here we are we have the 10 now the second one is the same given function but now we have to take our first function to consideration so we are saying first function of a given value times 2 now if we are calling the second function for 5 we are getting 20 as we should. That's it. Again, if you think those questions were way too easy, feel free to drop me a comment if you think they are too hard, if you think they are properly. I'm really looking forward for your suggestions and uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helped you and see you next time. Bye bye.